and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ness. I like to talk about books. Today I'm going to be filming a video that I would have liked myself about seven months ago. At the start of the year I joined the Illumicrate and Fairy Loot waiting list and I actually came off both waiting lists at the same time and I genuinely did not know which subscription I wanted to take out. I was very confused. I spent so many hours trawling through Fairy Loot and Illumicrate unboxings to get a feel for the boxes and I was just so confused. They seemed the same and in many ways they are the same but there is some slight differences which you might want to consider if you're trying to think about which box is the best fit for you. This is in no way sort of comparing which one is the better of the boxes. I personally have enjoyed both subscriptions. I think they're amazing in their own ways. I don't think you can possibly compare which one is better. It's just which box is going to be best for you. So to help you make that decision, I'm going to talk about some of the practicalities of the subscriptions and the books, which are the main thing, and also touch on the items that you would get if you took out the full box subscription for both Illumicrate and Fairy Loot. Like I said at the start, they seemed like they had so many similarities. They're both equally priced, around £33 in the UK with VAT and delivery. They both have the same concept of giving you a special edition book every month with items if you take out the full subscription and when I was trying to decide which one was best for me and I was looking at their websites looking at what other people were thinking I genuinely did not think that they were that much different. Now that I've had my subscriptions for eight months with both I never actually intended to keep them this long I was just going to get both for three months get a feel for it and then cancel one of them but it has actually taken me eight months to decide which one I actually want to keep on. For me it personally comes down to the book choices and I think for a lot of people that's what the choice is going to come down to. And with Fairy Loot and Illumicrate that's where the biggest difference lies in the books that they actually give you every month. So in this video I'm going to be looking at a very specific time frame and that is March to September 2021. I'm not going to talk about their October boxes just in case anyone hasn't actually received theirs yet because I will be showing you the books and the additions that they've given us in their months. So in March to September these are the books that I have received. As you can see with Fairy Loot, there definitely seems to be a very colourful, very purple theme running through their books. Illumicrate tends to come off a lot darker and it's only sort of when you look at them in this sense that you get a feel for the books that they're actually giving you in each subscription. Fairy Loot is a young adult fantasy subscription and that is what they've always been. Whereas Illumicrate is a little bit more mixed and they basically say we include books of all genres generally aimed towards a young adult or a crossover readership and when they say all genres I mean in this seven month period we've all been given fantasy all of these books are fantasy but we actually have five adult books and two young adults some of them people say are crossovers but the biggest difference in this book stack is that one is purely young adult fantasy and the other one has a bit more of a mix for rangers and I'm sure just looking at these comparisons already you're probably thinking I know which subscription is best for me. If you are an adult reader you're probably looking at this thinking Illumicrate is going to be better for me or if you're purely a young adult reader Fairy Loot would probably be the most suitable option for you. Like I have already said they are the same price however this is where the alternative subscription options come into play because Illumicrate throughout this entire period has done a book only subscription option which is a lot cheaper. I think that works out with like £18 plus VAT plus posters so you're probably saving about £10 on the item boxes and you get the book and you get the pin. So if you're someone that doesn't want the items at all during that time Illumicrate would have probably been the most appropriate subscription for you. However this is due to change because Fairy Loot is going to be bringing out a young adult and a adult book only subscription. So now you're thinking maybe Illumicrate isn't the only option for me because Fairy Loot is bringing out a book only adult subscription box. I haven't found the answer yet to whether they are not going to include the same books as what Illumicrate do. At the moment across Fairy Loot and Illumicrate and these book subscriptions they have an agreement that they will not do the same book in their boxes but they have had some crossovers in their special editions. For example they've both done From Blood and Ash. If Fairy Loot don't have an agreement to do the same books in their adult book only subscription I personally worry that, that an Illumicrate subscription could cross over with Fairy Loot book only but that's only going to be something we're going to find out in the months to come. So at the moment Fairy Loot is probably going to be better for young adult readers and Illumicrate are going to be probably better for people that read older and still enjoy young adult and crossover 
but that is due to change because of Fairy Lit's adult subscription and their book only option. Although Fairy Lit's book only option does seem to be a tiny bit more expensive. I saw on their website that they said their book only option is going to be £20, which I think is £2 more than Illumicrate, but that's probably not going to make your mind up on which one to get. This also is a point that isn't gonna make your mind up about which one to get, but if you are in the UK, there is a difference in the way that these parcels come to you. So Illumicrate ship their boxes via Royal Mail. Fairy Loot use Hermes. I personally prefer Royal Mail delivering my stuff over Hermes. Fairy Loot usually come battered a bit, whereas I've never had a damaged book from Illumicrate. But I'm sure some of you have. But I generally find Royal Mail to be a little bit more reliable if you're living in the UK. This will change if you're an international reader because Fairy Loot do have a US distribution centre. So it will probably be easier for you to get your hands on a Fairy Loot subscription if you are in the US. However, Illumicrate do hope to open next year a US fulfillment centre. So again, the long term decision about which way enlist to join if you are living in the US is probably going to change next year. For me, the thing that's probably going to make your mind up, like I've said, is the book selection. And in this seven month period, looking at the stacks side by side, I think that would have made my mind up had I been able to see that before I took out both subscriptions. Before going into my subscriptions, I felt like I had the idea that Fairy Loot did better customization of their monthly books and that Illumicrate didn't really put as much effort in or as much customization in. However, in the last half of this seven month period, I feel like Illumicrate have really stepped it up in their customizations. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about book customization in depth. With all of these Fairy Loot and Illumicrate books, they do come signed, but some of them are a digital signature, but I think that's purely been caused by the pandemic and not being able to get the books to the author for them to sign and then send back in time. So that doesn't really bother me at all. I'm pretty confident with both of them, I'm gonna get a special edition regardless because it's gonna be signed by the author. But what Fairy Loot and Illumicrate agree with the publisher to do with customization, I guess that's a different story. I'm not gonna run through these in the order of the month that I received them in because I can't remember in what order that they came. But what I will sort of do is like a little score system and looking at what I thought of the customization for that month and then generally compare who I think done the better customization. So for Fairy Loot, which is steeped in gold, this came with a fully redesigned cover, which I thought was amazing. With Fairy Loot, you can always guarantee that there's going to be something illustrated under the dust jacket and that there's probably going to be something on the hard cover as well. It feels a little bit cartoony at times, but I think that's just personal preference and these books are young adult. So the Witches Steeped in Gold edition, definitely different to whatever you could buy in the shop. I give this one a thumbs up. Their edition of Defy the Night did disappoint me a little bit. It had sprayed edges and you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to get a sprayed edge book. All of these are actually sprayed and stenciled edges. So I mean, holding them this way, they look beautiful. Fairy Loot is colourful and consistent in that sense. Their edition of Defy the Night did disappoint me a little bit. I love the sprayed edges, but I felt like they just could have done more with this edition. Although this is a exclusive hardback, you can't actually buy a hardback of this book in UK shops. So that is a bonus, but in terms of this being like such a special edition of this book, I wouldn't say that this one was. Same with the bright and the pale, although they did have glittery sprayed edges, which I thought was very cool. Again, it has sort of the same level of customization as what the previous book did, but this one, again, it hasn't really blown me away. Prison Healer is a different story though. This is a unique cover because they have done a colour change. They've put the lock on the side as well. I thought that was such a good idea. It doesn't have custom end papers, but it does have a very beautiful naked cover. I think they've done such a great job of this edition. I'm gonna give them another point for this one. Again, with Six Crimson Cross, they did do a color change with some stencils on the side and another beautiful naked hardback. To me, this feels like really autumn where the usual design in the UK felt very summery. Again, I'm gonna give them another point for this one on customization. Following the last two books, this one is a more recent edition. I think this is their September book and considering Six Crimson Cranes and The Prison Healer. I was expecting a lot of Fairy Loot at this point. So when they came out with these Hollow Stars, I was a little bit disappointed. The green of the leaves has been changed to orange and they've got some stencils on the side. But I just felt, I don't know, underwhelmed by this book. It has sort of a similar customization level, but I would have bought the UK hardback over this one. 
they don't get a point from me for this one because I just felt like there could have been more. Fire with Fire was a book that I was actually really annoyed by because they said that this was an exclusive cover. There is nothing exclusive about this. It is looks exactly the same as the UK hardback but with this one you do get sort of like a nice design underneath. Could have done more with this book in my opinion. They're not getting a point from me from that. So out of those seven special editions I was really really impressed with three of them. So now running through Illumicrate and what they've been doing in terms of customization we start with The Devil Makes three this is a total redesign and i actually love this so much more than the uk edition and i also love that the inside like matches this as well and it also has a lovely naked hardback as well this is one of my favorite editions that illumicrate has done in this time period definitely gets a point from me for this next up we have the wolf and the woodsman this came from their out of the woods box which was one of my favorite because i thought the theme was done so well for this, this is a unique cover as well. It has a total colour change with sprayed edges that sort of match the running theme of the book. Nothing on the end papers, but it has one of the nicest like sort of designs on the underneath. If you want to see these books in more detail, by the way, you can see the unboxing of that book previously on my channel where I would show you in more detail. I really love this edition. It was a shame about the lack of end papers, but this just has such a different feel to the UK mass market hardback. So they get a point from me for this as well. In the Ravenous Dark does not have a unique cover change but it does have stenciled edges which are in theme with this and the end papers are so unique as well. But I was let down by nothing underneath the book especially when Fairy Loot had been pumping out some really really good naked hardbacks. So unfortunately in comparison to everything we've just been seeing isn't enough. Same with the Jasmine Throne although this is an exclusive hardback you can only get the paperback in the UK if you weren't signed up for a Lumicrate. They have really nice stenciled edges which is in theme with the book but again there's just not enough to, in this book for me. Doesn't have custom end papers and nothing underneath but something on the hardback. And compared to Fairy Loot's really customised editions, just not that impressed. Illumicrate's edition of She Who Became the Sun is my favourite book of any of the customisations across Fairy Loot and Illumicrate. I absolutely loved what they've done with this book. This is a unique cover, so it has had a colour change, but also the cover sort of like continues into the sprayed edges, but also then into the end papers and I just thought this was so cleverly done as a book this to me is an actual work of art and then on the underneath as well you did have a beautiful naked hardback and some more art on the reverse of the dust jacket. When I received this book after having received the Jasmine Throne and the Unbroken I felt like Illumicrate had turned a corner for me. I wasn't impressed with their boxes until I got this one and saw what they could come out with and was like oh my god I hope that they stay to this level. Unfortunately, I didn't see that level again until September, which we're going to talk about at the end. But favourite editions, of course, they're going to get a point from me for this. The Unbroken, same issue I had as the Jasmine Throne. It is the, it's an exclusive hardback, but it is the same art on the cover. It's got sprayed edges, nothing on the end papers, and then sort of like nothing really underneath going on apart from the hard the naked cover. And then finally the last book to talk about from Illumicrate is their September edition of Empire of the Vampire which is a total colour change which I actually love this so much more. And for me the thing that they blew me away with for September was the stenciled edges and the sheer customization of that. I just think that is so so clever and they also had a unique naked cover as well. They absolutely get a point from me for that as well. So to conclude if you're someone that is looking for a book subscription that's going to give you the best customization, redesigned books. Actually, I gave Illumicrate four points and Fairly three points, which has totally changed my previous perspective going into my subscriptions that Fairly just spent more time on their books and, and giving you really exclusive redesigned books. Whether that helps you pick a subscription option, I don't know. But the reason that I did hesitate taking an Illumicrate subscription out was because I thought the books were just basic in their customization and Fairy Loot's books were better better designed, so different to what you'd find in the shops. Actually, the past seven months has challenged their view for me. Of course they're both going to have months where they just don't put as much effort in because maybe they are restricted on time, they're restricted by the, what the publisher can do, they're restricted by artists, and I certainly wouldn't let that override your initial viewing of 
looking at these stack of books, which ones would you have bought? And which ones would you have been happy receiving? For me personally, I feel like my Illumicrit subscription has been more worthwhile for me because I have more books there that I would have actually bought. But if talking about their book selection and the subscription options still hasn't helped you to make your mind up about which subscription you want to take out, I want to talk a little bit about the items that have come in the boxes because I think the items in some ways look very similar but there is slight differences in them. As standard in Illumicrate you know that you're going to get the monthly pin which is based on the book that's in the box. That is a regular item that will always come in their monthly boxes. With Fairy Loot their regular item is tarot cards which are sort of these things here which have beautiful artwork on. They are stunning but whether you think that you'll get a use out of these or not is up to you. Personally if I had to decide between the pin or the tarot cards I would be drawn more to Towards the pin but you do get the pin in the book only subscription I don't know if Fairy Loot would include the tarot cards and their book only subscription that's going to be coming out next year. Both boxes give you this a similar amount of items four or five items based on book fandoms except in this time period Illumicrate have done a fandom neutral box which was their August box based on the theme of Dark Academia and I really enjoyed that. They give you some really useful nice items like a book journal and I really felt like that box was well put together. Fairy Loot hasn't done a fandom neutral box in that time period. I don't know if they've ever done one. Generally you're gonna expect the same things. We've had tea tins from both of them book sleeves. I got this from Fairy Loot which I use all the time although Illumicrate in that time have done a glass one of these but not like with a straw. I use them both all the time so I actually don't know where that one is but that one is made of glass and it has a wooden top. It's very lovely. There is two items which might make you a bit more drawn to Illumicrate over Fairy Loot and that is some of their regular items including the book pots and their mugs. So in that time period I've had two book pots from Illumicrate. This is one of them the other one is from the Dark Academia box which is in another room but this is one that I got early on and it's an Egyptian mythology inspired book pot and people collect these. I think they've had about seven out now and there's no sign that these are actually going to end. I love them. I think that they look great on people's shelves. I use this one to keep my bookmarks in and I use the other one as a plant pot for a cactus. But that's not to say that Fairy Loot have never done anything like this because they have. Because they did have a ceramic plant pot inspired by Crescent City although this isn't part of a series so there's no guarantee that you'd get anything like this again. And their other semi-regular item is the Illumicrate mugs by Rosie Thorns. These come out about every three months as well. There's one due in the December box and I've had three in the seven months. Because they are all done by the same artist, they're very cohesive in style and they're well made. Again, there's no plans for when these are gonna end, but they do seem like a very regular series for Illumicrate. But that's not to say that Fairy Loot have never done a ceramic mug, because they have. I have had one mug of Fairy Loot and that was in my very first month, which makes me a little bit disappointed because I actually love this so much. The artist in this I think had done a fantastic job and this is inspired by the bear and the nightingale and personally I just like this art style just a little bit more. If Fairy Loot could do more of these I would be over the moon. It's lovely. I was very impressed with this mug and I am just disappointed that they haven't done them again. But that's not to say that they won't. They might do some in the winter months. Another big consideration to talk about when discussing items in these boxes is that in this seven month period Fairy Loot have actually given us two paperbacks. Illumicrate unfortunately have given us nothing. That's not to say that Illumicrate would never do a double book box month. They may have done so in the past and they may do so in the future but I'm just looking at this seven month period and comparing what we've had in that seven months and we've had nothing from Illumicrate but two exclusive paperbacks from Fairy Loot which have been digitally signed by the author with unique covers and colour changes. You cannot buy these in a shop. And for me that is worth so much more than getting items. This seems to be a bit of a regular occurrence for Fairy Loot because they have announced that December's box is also going to be a double book box. So three in a year? That's quite impressive. And I will take books over any item that you give me. And it might be something to consider when you're looking at a subscription. 
do you want a Lumicroid for more regular items or do you want the chance of getting more books? I feel like the only other difference when considering which book box would be more your style is to then consider the style of the art that we've been getting in the items themselves because they ha there has been a lot of crossover items, you know, socks, tea tins like I've said, photo frames. They do generally very similar types of items but their style is sometimes a little bit different. I found that fairy loot generally have more of a cartoony style, more likely to put faces on their items, whereas Illumicrate's items feel a little bit more less cartoon-like um, and are less likely to have characters on them. As an example, when talking about art style, I've got two items from Fairy Loot and two items from Illumicrate to show you. So this is one of the Illumicrate makeup bag items. And this is Manon from Throne of Glass. Beautiful art style, actually really sort of like a grown up. And this is sort of one of their wall arts, which is inspired by the, the darkest part of the forest by Holly Black. Again, sort of like not that cartoony, quite grown up in a way. I personally really like that. And that's in comparison to Fairy Loot's items, which are usually a little bit more cartoony. So here we have a bag for from Blood and Ash. Beautiful art, but I just wouldn't use it. It also makes this book seem like more juvenile than what it is. Which is one thing I've not sort of understood about Fairy Loot is they have books for, they have items for adult books in a young adult subscription box. So if you are sort of 14, 15, 16, getting a Fairy Loot sub subscription because they have books that cater to your age group, you might not have actually read the books of some of the items because they're out of your age range. And that's no judgement by the way, I read some spicy books when I was um, 13. <laughs> but had my parents probably knew what I was reading, I don't think I would have been allowed to have read it. And the second item I'm using as an example is the Coasters from Serpent and Dove, which is a book I read and really enjoyed. And the art is beautiful, but I still think it's a little bit catered towards younger people. But again, no judgement in that. Whether you would prefer a more adult or a more teenage art style, that is completely up to you. I'm just thinking about ways that you might find yourself in one of these boxes. The art is always amazing in both boxes. I never have complaints about the art. It's always stunning and I'm always blown away by what people have produced for these boxes. But as a person in their late 20s who enjoys more adult style things at this point in life, I do gravitate more towards Illumicrate's art style. But I use probably the same proportion of items from both boxes. Just to throw some spanner in the works, I thought I would show you my favourite item of any book box that I've been given in that seven month period and that is these bookends by Fairy Loot. These are Lord of the Rings inspired. I was very impressed when I got them. I got these very early on. I think these came in like April's box and last month I was very disappointed in Fairy Loot's box. That was the worst box I'd got across both subscriptions and it was purely down to the items but then I look at things like this and I know what Fairy Loot can produce and I'm like ah oh, more of like this style please. So I hope this video sort of helped you feel like you know which box is more suitable for you, maybe your financial position, which books you want more which items you gravitate more towards. They're so very, very similar, but have slight little differences. And hopefully this video has helped you understand the slight differences so that you know which box you want to take out if you only want to take out one subscription. There'll be so many factors which contribute to which one you feel is best for you, whether that is the books, that are provided, the customization of the books that's provided, the items that you are given, and the subscription type. So hope that helps. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel I hope that you would consider subscribing to me so you can watch more of my content in the future and I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Thank you for watching. Bye guys!